Hi, I'm Rose Little Sharp. Today's August 31st, 2020. And I have something to say from the spirit that's very dear to my heart personally um, because it has to do with truth. It has to do with justice. It has to do with what's right. And um, that's what I'm going to talk about today. So, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, Yeshua. Touch us, heal us. Help us to forgive. Help us to move forward. Help us to hear you clearly, Holy Spirit. Open our eyes, open our ears so that we can see and hear the truth. We rebuke the coronavirus in Jesus Yeshua's name and we rebuke evil in Jesus Yeshua's name. And we thank you, Father, for hearing us. We pray for America and the world. We know that the world is yours, Father, and the fullness thereof, that's what your word tells us. So we know that you're taking back the earth, and um, we thank you that we walk with you every day. So bless us in Jesus Yeshua's name. I got this this morning. Um, I received an email from a black woman who um, came at me and said a bunch of things about me that were absolutely not true. And I started thinking about all of it and the injustice and all the things that many people have gone through in the world. And this is something we have to understand because if we don't get this, we will never, ever, ever walk in the kingdom of God with the spirit of God. Because God is not hate. God does not walk in anger. He walks in forgiveness and love and mercy. And if we can't grab that, we will never have peace in the world, in the country. Now, we know that evil is rising up. So it is going to be happening all over the world. Things that are not right. Injustice. All right? Where things happen that we know are absolutely abominations in the sight of God and just outright wrong. Terrible, terrible, terrible atrocities are happening all over the world. But until we recognize who's the source of it, we're going to attack each other. Because that's what we see. We see people. We see people who are tall, who are short, who are thin, who are heavy, who are black, who are white, who have all kinds of skin tones. We see the color of the hair. We see the color of the eyes. We see the nose, we see the mouth, and that's what we look at, and that's what we judge. If we don't like the way it looks, we pass a judgment. If a person's walking down the street in raggedy clothes, the first thing we think of, oh, that's a bum. Be careful, they might rob you. And that's whether they're black or white. It has nothing to do with skin color. It has to do with what we're seeing with our eyes. And whether we're comfortable with that or not. If somebody was walking down the street with a gun in their hand, I wouldn't care if they were white, black, purple, pink. I wouldn't be too keen on the fact that they had a gun in their hand. With the way the world is today. That's why people that are for Trump keep their mouth zipped until election time comes because they don't want to have confrontation with anybody because of it unless you have the guts to stand up and say you know what I don't care what the consequences are I'm saying my peace and that's what we have to learn to do we have to stop being afraid of the other side and evil I get attacked a lot by people because they watch a video of me and they come to a conclusion all the time. They don't even watch the other videos to see what I've talked about. We assume many things in life and I'm not going to go into what that word means because we can all, we all get that. We cannot assume anything in this world the today that we're in. Because there are so many things that Satan is throwing out 
to create chaos and confusion and hatred and anger, that if we just jump into anything, we could be jumping into something that's an absolute untruth. We have to listen to the Spirit of God in everything we do in this world today. Because he's the one with discernment. He's the one that knows the true facts about everything. I was just recalled being that I'm cruel. I have never been cruel a day in my life. I have always stood up for righteousness, and even as a child. If I saw anybody hurt a baby kitten or an animal, I was the first one to stand up and say, hey, stop. I got myself in trouble years ago when I saw a guy beating up two kids and throwing them all over the place. And I walked out my back door and I said, hey, stop that. And the guy turned at me and accused me because they were coming through my backyard running away from this guy because they were stealing his strawberries. A couple kids ran into the field picking the strawberries. And they ran through my backyard to get away from the guy, and he caught them. So he was throwing them all over the place. And I stood up for what was right. So he proceeded to face me then and started cursing me out. Called me every name in the book. I had nothing to do with what happened, absolutely nothing to do with it. But he made up some kind of conclusion that I was involved in the whole thing because they happened to run through my yard. This is what we do. So with that, my husband runs out and starts coming at him now. Hey, who are you calling my wife names? So the thing escalated. Back and forth, back and forth. We obviously walked back in the house. And the guy must have went and told his father that they were stealing strawberries coming through my yard and that I was involved. So they called the police on us. Next thing you know, the cops are in my driveway, and I did absolutely nothing except try to protect the kids that he was beating up. So obviously we explained to the cop and everything was fine, but the point is, I stood up for righteousness, and the cops got called on me because of it. That very night, the guy that called the cops, the father of the guy who called the cops on us, had a massive heart attack and, draw, and died. And I had nothing to do with any of it. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. If we don't get that, we're going to look to get vengeance on all the wrongs that were done to each of us in our lives. And that's hatred. Unforgiveness. We can go all the way back to the African Americans, which is what's going on right now. They're claiming justice for what was wronged to them. And let me just remind my black brothers and sisters, black men were part of the slavery that was going on in Africa. So your own people turned against you for money. Make sure we get the things correct. Blacks are prejudiced against whites. Whites are prejudiced against blacks. And all of it is wrong. Right now, what the black people are doing, coming at us and coming at anybody that's white, because they said I was white privilege in this email. They don't even know if I have black history in my family. How do they know? I don't have black in my blood. They don't, do they? But they called me out as white privilege and cruel. Because I'm white. If that's not prejudice, what is it? You are doing the very same thing that you claim we do. Because of our skin color now. We have to see the truth and the reality of all this. What's going on? What is Satan doing here? He's creating havoc. 
He wants to destroy us from within. That's how he operates. You know how many armies went down in the Bible? Because chaos was created and they didn't know who the enemy was anymore and they started killing each other? Isn't that what we're doing in America? Hurting each other, burning buildings down? Shooting guns and just hitting anything in, in its way? Little children getting killed? I really don't think that's what we all want to do. Blacks were wronged. Jewish people were wronged. They were thrown in incinerators while the world stood back and kept their mouths silent. Just because they were God's people. We are getting persecuted now as Christians because we stand up for God and what he says is right and wrong. We get persecuted for it. The people going to the Trump rallies. They're waiting outside for them. There's no tolerance. I have just as much right to what I believe as you do. Do we get that? We have freedom of speech in this country. You can't just pick one group and say, well, you keep your mouth shut. We don't want to hear what you have to say anymore. If I want to say that Jesus is Lord and we should be following him, I have the right to say that. You don't have to watch and you don't have to listen. We have voices that we're allowed to put out there. And that's a good thing. Because we should hear what each other says. And then come to what? The right conclusion in it all. And not just jump and make a judgment call on anybody. That's what we're doing in the world today. It's just we just judge each other for no reason. When I first started putting my videos out, and I'll never forget this because it was like amazing to me, I had people on a Christian site come at me and call me rich and in need of nothing. And who does she think she is? Meanwhile, I was poor and on food stamps. But they assumed, because I was out there on videos, that I was loaded with money. Why is that? Why, I have to have money to talk on a video and put it out there? It's free, folks. All right, you need a camera and you need a few things. You have to be rich to do this? I've been serving the Lord for 48 years. Well, maybe 49. I haven't even lost count. Years now. And I've been poor the whole time. It's only been recently that things are a little smoother. But everything that comes in here isn't for me anyway. It's for the safe havens and for the furthering of the gospel. So yeah, I guess I am personally still very poor. But do I care? No, I don't care. You know why I don't care? Because that's not my life. Money's not my life, and it's not my world. It never was, and it never will be. Because I happen to love Jesus. And I'm here teaching you and showing you truth. Because that's what he called me to do. He called me, and he speaks to me. And I relay it to you. Because we all need to hear from God. Our Father what we need to do and what we need not to do. Now, I wrote this down and I don't want to forget anything that I wrote because it was all really good stuff that God gave me. Racism goes both ways. Whites against blacks, blacks against whites. The devil put blacks into slavery by using black men in Africa and white men. The devil moves people to destroy each other. Jews were thrown into incinerators just because Satan knew they were God's people. Black people worship Jesus through it all, and Satan hated them for it. If you start calling all whites cruel, you're being prejudiced because that is a lie. If you say all blacks commit crimes, that is a lie. Let's talk the truth. The devil is dividing us, so we will not have the power we need in Christ to stop him from taking over the world. We had better see the real enemy and rebuke him, not each other. Armies went down in the Bible when they got confused over who was the real enemy and killed each other. 
This is what Satan is doing. We have to love one another and remember that vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. The bad seeds, seeds we arrest and they face trial. If anyone slips through the cracks, they will stand before God Almighty. I'm going to say that one again. The bad seeds we arrest and they face trial. But if anyone slips through the cracks and gets away with it, in other words, they will stand before God Almighty. And that goes back to vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. Stop trying and stop hating. We can all think of things we can be angry about and live in hate. Every one of us has things that God is very angry in our lives. And we can walk in hatred against it if we choose to. The past is the past. And if we all live in our past and the things we have done wrong, we will never have a peaceful future. God forgives and God calls us to do the same. And again, he will deal with evil and evil people. Forgive ourselves and learn and love. Truth is truth and lies are lies. And another thing he said to me, injustice will always be in this fallen world. So if that's all we're going to focus on is all the injustices going on, we might as well just hang it up and give up on life. Because there's plenty of injustice happening out there. There's child trafficking, sex trafficking. There's all kinds of things. There's children being beaten by their parents. There's things probably if we knew we would get sick. Now, I started getting a list of injustices that we deal with. What about women? Well, we had no right to vote because we were considered less than men. Look at the fight that took to get women to be able to vote. Why is it we weren't allowed to vote? Who came up with that conclusion that we didn't have the right to vote at some point? That's persecution, folks. What about heavy people? who are refused jobs because of how they look. That's persecution. People who side with God are getting silenced because the world does not want to hear that they are sinning. That's persecution. Women's rights, gays' rights, all because they feel slighted and persecuted. Sometimes they are. These are all injustices that we feel. We have God-given rights and we have God-given rules. Whose side are we on? God or Satan's? One is true love and the other is pure hate. Some people call black people names because they're for Trump. We have to stand up for what is right. Truth prevails and lies will always fail. That's what he gave me. The bottom line, it comes down to truth. And the bottom line is it comes down to good and evil. If you want to live in hate, because you were persecuted and you still think you're being persecuted, that's your choice. I get persecuted for being a woman who's speaking her, her mouth out there and my heart because after all, I'm a woman and the Bible says that they should be silent in the churches. I've actually had men call me on the phone and tell me, keep your mouth quiet. You should be silent. That was not what he meant, folks. If that's the case, then how come Deborah was a judge over Israel and made all the decisions? If that were the case. If that were the case, then why does God say 
He sees no difference in the spirit. Male nor female, bond nor free. That means nobody is without the Holy Spirit if they want him. There has been slavery going on in this world for generations and generations. And not only just black people, white people too were slaves to the kings. It has nothing to do with color. It has to do with evil. Looking to make somebody subservient to them so that they can feel better about themselves. Were blacks made slaves? Absolutely. But I'm sure I could come up with a lot of Jewish people and what they go through and how they're persecuted. And again, I'm persecuted for being a woman preacher. We can't let these things weigh us down and pull us away from who we are as the children of God. I told the person that wrote to me and said I had was white privilege and I was cruel and this and that and this and that. All because I said on the last video, we need to make sure we find out the truth before we jump down these cops' throats and right away say they're being prejudiced against blacks. I did not say the cop was right and the black man was wrong. What I said was, we can't just assume that the cop was wrong. Now we find out that he had a knife on him. That's why they must have tased him in the first place. I don't know. I don't know the whole story. George Floyd had enough drugs in him to shut his lungs down before that even took place. What was in the heart of the cop? I have no idea. But God does. And God will have his vengeance. And we must believe that. He will repay. We can never do the job that God does when it comes to vengeance. I've had people come at me and God dealt with them. And I had nothing to do with it. <clears throat> so we have to understand this and stop becoming those that need to take vengeance. And stop just calling all white people racist. Because that's absolutely a lie from the devil. Because if you have Jesus in you, you absolutely love your brother and sister in the Lord. Whether they're white, black, pink, purple. You don't care. Because you have a bond in Christ. And if we don't see that, and you as Christians start telling me that I'm cruel, and I don't understand you, where, where do we go next? What happens next? Do we all just kill each other? Do we all just hate each other now? Because we have no understanding? I know what it's like to be persecuted. I deal with it all the time. I don't know what it's like to be persecuted as a black person. But the fact of the matter is, persecution is persecution. Nobody likes it. But I know who I am in Christ Jesus. So whether you call me cruel, whether you think I'm evil, it doesn't really matter. Because it's what God thinks about me. Because I will stand before God. And so will you. So for your injustice and pointing out lies about somebody, you will stand before God. And he will say, do you remember the time you did that? If we don't get forgiveness through Jesus... We're all doomed to hell for our sins. Let's face it, we're all sinners, saved by grace, because of what the Lord did for us. So what are we going to do about this? Those of you that are black, you have to start seeing clearly. Your brothers and sisters in the Lord love you. 
And I told that person, if I was next to you, I would stand right with you against injustice. Every time. Because that happens to be who I am. If I see somebody beating a dog, I'll be the first one there to stop it. I just jump in to stop things like that. Because I hate it. Just like I hate lying. I absolutely despise lying. Because it does nothing but create chaos and confusion. And God is not a liar. And we should not be liars either. And we should not be judgers either like that. Before we even find out the facts. Jesus didn't do it. Even when Jesus found out the facts. He caught, they caught the woman... In an adulterous situation, red-handed they caught her. And they were going to stone her to death. And Jesus said this. What did he say? We all know it. He who is without sin cast the first stone. And what did they do? They all dropped their stones and their rocks. And they walked away. And he was left alone with her. And he said, I do not judge you. But his answer always was, go and sin no more to the people. We're to walk with the Lord in our lives and stay away from sin. And we can do it if we allow the Holy Spirit to operate in us. And we can love one another because we have that in us to do that. We have to stop all this so that America can heal. And we have to understand truth. How many white people really do have an issue with blacks? Think about it. There are a lot of Christians in this country. And our president is not prejudiced against blacks. He's actually helped them more than any government has done. And all you blacks that are Democrats and are standing to vote for the Democrats, they're the ones that were against freeing the slaves. It was Lincoln, a white man, who came against slavery to the point where our country went into a civil war over it. So all the northern people were against slavery. They fought and died and died for black people. Think about that for a minute. White men fought and died for you to be free in this country. That's something to say. So how prejudiced is that if they died and laid their lives down so you could have freedom against another white man they did it? For freedom. They killed their own brothers. Standing up for righteousness. And the fact that slavery was wrong. That's saying something. And we better see that. So you're going to rip down a statue of Lincoln? Who set you free? Just because he's white? Who's prejudiced? Who's the ones being prejudiced? You are. You are. And you better see clearly. Because that man Lincoln set you free. And all of the white men that fought in the army helped set you free. And guess what? You are free in this country. You are free. Don't let the devil tell you you're not. Are there people that have prejudice problems? Absolutely. We rebuke that in Jesus' name. Start rebuking it in the name of Jesus and let the power of God slap it back. Let the power of God slap this all back. If you start praying again like your ancestors did when they were in slavery and they praised the Lord and they sang songs before God, their freedom came to pass. Do you realize their prayers were answered? They prayed to Jesus. And they got set free. The Jews got set free. 
because finally the world started seeing clearly that they were being slaughtered and they stepped in and they fought Hitler and he lost. Evil will always try to rise up. But if we, as the children of Almighty God, fight it back in Jesus Yeshua's name, it will surely fail. And that's what we're called to do. We're called to love one another and fight evil everywhere it stands. Because remember, God is with us, but he's not with hatred. He's not with injustice. He's with righteousness. And that's what we need to get. And we need to get that we love one another and we don't point fingers and come to conclusions that are not even truth. So I'm Lois Vogel Sharp, and I love you. And I'll be back when he sends me back again, and have a blessed day.